Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anson Ali. Um, and I'm here to present on a bit of research entitled uh, On the Fokaimus Coefficients for Saturated Fruits. This is a pre recorded presentation, so any questions or comments can be forwarded to the email um, anson underscore 1991 at five.com. The presentation will follow this layout where I'll go to the introduction of what exactly is the Fokaimus equations and the coefficients associated it. I'll give the objectives of research, the method I went about of doing the research itself. I will highlight some characteristic results and analysis of the results, and finally conclusions. Now, the research at hand is essentially about investigating the Fokaima coefficients for saturated flows. But what exactly are these coefficients? Well, they are nothing more than empirical values used within the DASIS for Kaimer's law. And this law essentially describes fluid flow within porous media. And there are several forms of this equation. And, this form, and these forms depend upon the existing flow conditions as well as the media's water content. For saturated media, there are two general cases. The first is for media flows which are steady and at low velocities. And equations breaks down to a simple linear one between pressure difference and the velocity, and this is commonly known as the Darcy's law. The second also is within the steady flow regime, but at higher velocities, and the relationship here involves the incorporation of a quadratic term, and this is known as for Kaimer's law. The third is for unsteady flows, and this is typically formed with higher flow velocities. In this form, an additional term is added, an acceleration term is added, and this results in what is termed as the modified Fokaimer's law. The Fokaimer coefficients, which are the empirical coefficients, are nothing more than E1, B2, and C3, which are existent in the relevant forms of this equation. So how do we go about selecting these coefficient values? But for the saturated cases, as outlined in the previous slide, many researchers would have res developed respective formula or descriptive models, which would give or recommend values for A1, B2, and C3, depending on the media type. And in general, a single combination would be valid for that specific flow problem. For unsaturated flows, where the media water content may vary throughout the flow problem, these flows are fundamentally unsteady, and the velocities may range between high to low or vice versa. Despite this, the same modified for Kaimer's law, which is applicable for the saturated flow problem, remains applicable for unsaturated flows. The difference, however, is that a single combination of E1, B2, and C3 would not be valid for the unsaturated keys. And the reason being is that the nature of these coefficients may in fact vary with the media water content. And it is this area that the research is geared towards. More specifically, the objectives of the research is to investigate the nature of these coefficients on saturated flow cases to determine the significance of each coefficient term within the gas for climate equation when it is applied to unsaturated flow problems and to determine the validity of utilizing a, symbol, a single combination of these coefficients for unsaturated flow problems. And the reason for this final objective is that it is now the common practice to assume only a single combination of E1, D2, and C3 over the entirety of an unsaturated flow problem. So the method used to obtain these objectives was nothing more than to set up a series of laboratory experiments which permitted the measurements of pressure difference, velocity and accelerations on saturated flows and then compute the coefficients E1, B2 and C3. These experiments were conducted on four media types as shown in the table E to D and these media were generally coarse grained and as a result their saturated hydraulic conductivities were generally high as shown in the table. So take a bit more detail regarding the experimental setup and procedure. Basically, as a transparent vertical square column was built, which was open at one end and fit to a wire mesh at the other. The column was also partitioned with a removable watertight heat, 
which separated the column into two sections, the upper and the lower section. The lower section was filled with the dry homogeneous porous media, while the top section was filled with water at desired heights. The procedure then followed removing the watertight gate at a high speed and allowing the water to infiltrate into the soil due to the effects of gravity. Simultaneously, video observations were made along the transparent walls of the column and this monitored the progression of the water into the porous medium, as well as the progressive degrees of the water depth elevation in the section above. These observations were what were used to compute the pressure difference, the velocities, and the acceleration values. Details regarding the, the actual formula of the Florentian complex and hence omitted in this presentation. For further details, please see the relevant paper. And just to give an example of the actual observations from the high frame rate camera, here we see the forest media A and the progressive infiltration of the water into the soil due to the removal of the heat. So this is the results for porous media E, which was shown on the previous slide. On the y-axis is the flow velocity through the media, the average flow velocity, and on the x-axis is the infiltrated depth as measured from the heat removal position. And each curve on this graph represents the a specific pressure difference. And you can see that they all follow this general power law relationship. And this observation is conducive with observations and previous researches for infiltration into unsaturated soils. What is also should be mentioned is that as the infiltration depth increases, they all converge to one single solution or one single flow velocity, which is from observation could be seen to be the saturated hydraulic conductivity value. And this observation is also noted for porous media B, C, and D. The results for each of the media was then analyzed by selecting any three data points for each media, which would yield the system of equations. Now, these data points could be either along a constant pressure difference or along a constant infiltrated depth, and they would effectively yield a linear system of equations, which, which when resolved, would yield the Fokimus coefficients A1, P2, and C3. So, for example, using the results of porous media B at a constant depth of 2 cm, we have a range of data points which are identified as cases 1 to 4. Utilizing cases 2, 3, and 4 as the three data points to be included in, in the linear system, we obtain coefficients values of 715.3, minus 722.4, and minus 609.4 for the coefficients A1, B2, and C3. However, when different data points are used at the same depth, some level of variation in A1, B2, and C3 is observed. This shows that the coefficients are not constant, but in fact vary depending on the pressure difference across the unsaturated sample. A similar analysis at a different infiltrated depth of 5 centimeters outlined similar observations. And this is seen in the table presented here. These results also show a dependence of the coefficients on infiltrated depth. For instance, at a constant pressure difference of 4 centimeters, but with a varied infiltrated depth of 2 centimeters and 5 centimeters, we can see that the coefficients A1, B2, and C3 vary between both. Therefore, it is seen that the coefficients, the Fokimer coefficients for unsaturated flow applications not only depend on the pressure difference, but also on the infiltrated depth. Another analysis was conducted, but in this case, two common assumptions are made. The first being that the A1 coefficient is equivalent to the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the media, and the second is that the C3 coefficient is equal to zero, since the media is coarse grained. Again, utilizing porous media B as the example, A1 in this case is selected as 594.3, while C3 is equivalent to zero. Substitution of these values 
into each of the cases 1 to 4 and 13 to 16 reveals that the B2 coefficient varies with both the pressure difference and the infiltrated depth of the sample. Therefore, even in cases where reasonable assumptions are made, it is seen that in a single combination of A1, B2, and C3 is invalid over the entirety of the unsaturated flow problem. So in conclusion, both analysis show that for unsaturated flow cases, the Darcy Fukuyama coefficients vary not only with the pressure difference across the media, but also with the infiltrated depth into the media. In addition, the second analysis outlines that the A1, B2 terms appear to have a significant effect in the, DAS, in the overall Darcy Fukuyama equation, while some of these pieces surround the C3 term. And finally, both analysis show that a single combination of the A1, B2, and C3 coefficients is indeed invalid over the entirety of an unsaturated flow problem. These are some of the references used in the research. And this concludes my presentation. Greater details regarding research will be found in the paper. And then, again, any questions or comments can be forwarded to the email address anton underscore 1991 at live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cole, for that presentation. Um, Anton is not here yet on connectivity problems. I don't know if you managed to get them resolved. Do you see Anton on top of the Um, No, I'm not seeing him online. All right. Um, Anton's co author is, is here, Dr. Lamb, who said that she will. Um, one or two questions. So, if there are any questions that anyone may want to pose, um, we'll try to get them answered now, or else you can always send them by email. Well, I, I do have one question, um, and um, it's a more general question, um, which is which is really. Um, you know, all the fundamental questions we ask. Um, what is the key significance um, of the research in terms of you know, this, um, both its theoretical development of what may, you know, of, of the state of the art or in terms of its application in, a, in, a, in terms of practical um, situations? Um, I don't know if perhaps you could shed some light on that, um, Dr. Lam, if you're here. Um, hi, good morning, everybody. Yes, I'm here. Um, well, Anton's main research was really involving um, looking at how the flow in the swash zone is taking place. So we are dealing with an inherently unsaturated flow in the swash zone. Um, what is commonly done when we're modeling the swash zone dynamics is to use a standard set of coefficients, that same darcy Fokheimer formulation, and they will place the various coefficients when they're optimizing the solutions based on either physical or experimental or field data. Um, so Anton decided to investigate a little bit into the validity of doing that and uh, following that approach, and that is where he developed the experimentation and look to see how the coefficients would vary and how best he can adapt or suit what he's seeing from the results. Ultimately, um, he wanted to find a connection or relationship between the coefficients and the pressure and velocity changes. Um, but that is part of what he's done. And of course, he'd be best to advise on any further um, work done in that front. Um, but that was the whole context of the research. It's modeling the swash zone and the flows that we see in that area in the coastal environment. Thank you very much, Dr. Lam. And in fact, we are, that primes us for our presentation B06. We should be at 9.45 a.m. So I think that that answers, that is exactly the, the, the kind of answer I was looking for. 
to put what he did there in the context of, of the more in-depth um, PhD research that he is doing. Um, 